folks, it is still the 27th. I'm here on the uh, right side with our old friend, the 64-foot diaphone. Gotta love him. So uh, a few people asked, how, were, how is the frequency measurement done? And that's what I'm going to show here in this little video. Uh, so as you can see, here is a microphone right here, a DBX measurement microphone. And I've got it going through a little circuit that I built to take the waveforms and square them up into little spiky pulse waves so that it's easier for the oscilloscope to count. Otherwise, it, it can't exactly see what it's trying to measure if you don't clean up the waveform, so to speak. So when you see what's on the oscilloscope, it's not the sound that's being made. It is not representative of the waveform of the pipe at all. So I'm going to start this thing going. I'm going to turn the camera around, and I'm going to zoom in on the oscilloscope screen. And uh, you'll see that the pitch wavers around a lot, and when the pulses become nice and even, they become evenly spaced on the display, and the display locks on to a frequency of about 9.5 or 10 hertz. So uh, I'll start this thing up and show you how it works. I'm going to prop this open. Now this is something you don't usually hear is any other note than low C rattling around down here underneath the uh, chest. It's quite a knocking sound, I'd say. This is E, and I think it'll cooperate, so let's see what it does. There, did you see it? Now, this shows how difficult it can be to measure these because it popped down to 10.5 cycles a few times in between all the other measurements. And that's what you have to go with because it's obvious when it lines up where it should be, it locks in and the waveform becomes very obvious. Okay, so um, I've been wanting to show this for a while. I don't know how well it's going to show up on video, but the 64-foot pipes plainly visibly shake down here when they're being played. So I'm going to trip the uh, primary on low E. I've got focused in there. Now I don't know if you could see that, but the pipe was plainly, you know, clearly moving about a sixteenth of an inch, and then, uh, well, F does... The same thing. Some do it more than others. And don't worry about that clamp on low F, it just had a crack in it. It's not going to fall apart. So anyway, it's, uh, it's always a trip being down here with the 64s and uh, in case you wondered what they sound like down here I'll uh, I'll trip the primary starting at uh, let's see A sharp
the others. That's F. E. Okay, I am up here amongst the upper part of the 64-foot diaphones, okay? Uh, we're looking back toward the uh, great solo there, and these are the resonators, the top mitered resonators of the 64-foot. People asked about if this was the original tuning or not, whether it had ever been tuned since 1929 or 30 or 31, whatever. And the answer, I think, is probably no, and here's why. After the tuning process a few months ago, you see this piece of wood right here that I'm shining the flashlight on? They had to add that to get the pipe flat enough to speak the correct pitch. Now you might be thinking, why not just move the tuning sleeve, this tuning slide out? Well, if it came all the way out here, then it would start to uncover the slot at the back. You know, so it was better to just leave it there and shade it here because that's, that's uh, a very regular thing to do with pipes like this. And this pipe, I don't remember what note this is, but that piece of wood that's on the front there that's more yellowish in color, right there, see that? They had to add that to get that pipe flat enough. So we know that these were apparently never tuned really well at the beginning because the measurements showed that they're pretty darn smack in tune now, right? And they weren't before. And this is what it took to get them there. So we can safely conclude that for 70 some years, they were never really in tune very well. And now they are. So I just wanted to add that. <laughs>